I'll talk about hydrothermal stresses and strains in a laminate. Uh, the figure shows a uh, ply in a laminate, actually, and the laminate is subjected to a delta T and a delta C. There are no mechanical loads, and the laminate is thus under the effect of hydrothermal loading. And what's the procedure to calculate the stresses in a laminate resulting from these types of loading? That's the question. And the figure uh, shows the global coordinates, x, y, and the local coordinates. In a laminate, the general representation of strain is not changed. Epsilon equals epsilon zero plus Z times kappa, where epsilon is now the total strain. This strain is the total strain, and it's equal to epsilon zero plus Z times kappa total strain obeys this geometric relation. And for this ply number K, the relation between total strain and stress is as given here. For ply number K, total strain is equal to S bar sigma plus epsilon T plus epsilon C, where epsilon T is thermal strain term, it's delta T times alpha vector. And epsilon C is hygroscopic strain, it's delta C times beta vector. You can invert this relation or write stress in terms of strain. The hygrothermal terms are moved to the left side here, and then sigma becomes Q bar times this difference, epsilon minus epsilon T minus epsilon C. Q bar is transformed to reduce stiffness matrix. And the difference here is denoted by epsilon M. This is called mechanical strain vector. Therefore, stress depends on the mechanical strain vector that should be non-zero to have stress within the laminate. In shorthand notation, sigma in this ply, in this particular ply is Q bar times epsilon mechanical, and this equation can be applied for any uh, ply and any point in that ply. This is known, and uh, how can we find a general relation for Mid-plane strains and curvatures uh, for a laminate under hydrothermal load. That's the question. We will consider uh, resultant forces and moments. However, if you consider this as a laminate, there are no resultant forces here and no resultant uh, moments because uh, there is no mechanical loading, and therefore resultant force and resultant moment should be equal to zero. And integrate stresses and their moments to impose this condition. For example, this is the integral of stress over the thickness from minus h over 2 to h over 2. We have dealt with this before. Uh, this can be calculated over uh, separate supplies. Therefore, we have a summation from one to n of integral from hk minus one to hk of sigma k dz. Contributions from all plies are considered. Now, this is the total resultant force, but it has to be equal to zero because we have only our thermal loading here, there is no external force. And in a similar way, you can write the resultant moment acting over the laminate. And that's going to be Z times sigma dz. You can carry out the summations over 
applies from one to n. And resultant moments, resultant moment vector is the zero vector, and all resultant moments are zero. We can find a general relation by substituting this stress expression into these integrals, the force integral and the moment integral. There's the force integral and there's the moment integral. Substitute stress in this result and rearrange the final expression. You will have thermal terms here because of epsilon mechanical. Epsilon mechanical is delta T times alpha vector. And uh, epsilon thermal is delta T times alpha vector. And epsilon C is delta C times beta vector. And epsilon M contains these vectors. Therefore, you will have thermal, uh, you will have terms related with the thermal effects and the hygroscopic effect in the final expression. Uh, we will not go into uh, details of these. However, if you make this substitution and rearrange the expressions, you will end up with these uh, equations in matrix form. In the first equation results from resultant force equal to A epsilon zero plus me times kappa equals and t plus and c. A and b are the stiffness matrices we have talked about in the previous lectures. A is the extensional stiffness matrix. B is the coupling stiffness matrix. Epsilon zero and kappa are mid-plane values. But neutral thermal and hygroscopic terms, we have a thermal load vector and the hygroscopic load vector on the right hand side i'm going to define these vectors and the moment resultant gives b epsilon zero plus the kappa equals mt plus mc left hand side is exactly the same however however on the right hand side we have the <coughs> thermal moment vector and the hygroscopic moment vector these have to be calculated but if you combine these two matrix representations, you will end up with this final form. The Ramlet stiffness matrix times mid plane strain curvature vector equals thermal loading vector plus hygroscopic loading vector. And how are these? Vectors defined. And T is also referred to as thermal force vector. Its components are NXT and YT and NXYT. And this vector is given by this summation or this multiplication delta T times sum from one to N, Q bar K, alpha K, HK minus HK1, an alpha vector is actually defined here. This is the alpha vector, and that's the beta vector. Alpha vector contains alpha X, alpha Y, alpha XY for a given Y. Uh, we have talked about a calculation of alpha X, alpha Y, alpha XY previously. These are term expansion coefficients in the global system. And MT is thermal moment vector. It contains these entries, MXT, MYT, and MXYT. It's given in this form, one over two delta T times sum from one to N, Q bar K, alpha K, HK squared minus HK minus one squared. Alpha vector is defined, and the hygroscopic loading vectors and C and MC they are defined in a similar way. They have exactly the same representations. However, in these expressions, delta T is replaced by delta C, and the alpha vector is replaced by 
the beta vector. And then you'll be able to compute the elements of hygroscopic loading vector and C and MC. And how do we proceed with uh, hydrothermal analysis? This is the starting point. You first form all these matrices, A, B, D, thermal loading vectors and hygroscopic loading vectors and solve this equation. Then you'll be able to solve this equation for epsilon zero and kappa. And once these are computed, total strain vector in the laminates can be calculated. In the next step, you'll be able to find mechanical strain vector for any of the plies. Epsilon mechanical is total strain minus thermal strain minus hygroscopic strain. And if this is known, stress can be calculated at any point in a given ply. We call sigma in a given ply, sigma k equals q bar k times epsilon mechanical k. The important point is that epsilon mechanical shouldn't be used in the calculation of stress. And one other remark is that if there is mechanical loading, you can either use superposition or add the mechanical loading vector as another vector here in the very first equation. If the mechanical loads are not zero, you can add another vector here to account for mechanical loading. Or you can apply the principle of superposition and find stresses separately for thermal loading and mechanical loading. That's another way of treating this problem. And I'm going to talk about an example related to calculation of stresses or thermal stresses in this particular case. That's the example problem statement. The residual stresses at the bottom surface of the 90 degree ply, the surface is asked, this is a two ply laminate that are only two plies, a zero degree ply and a 90 degree ply. That's under the effect of a delta T that could be a decrease from a processing temperature. Delta T is minus 75 degrees Celsius. There are two plies. And stresses will not be zero because of the difference in the elastic properties and thermal properties of these plies. No hygroscopic effect, delta C is given as zero. Each ply is five millimeter thick. And what are the stresses at this particular location? This is Z, therefore what are the stresses at the Z equals five millimeters? That's the question. The, you need to work with a math package. You have to prepare a script to carry out uh, the computations. Uh, these are given in file 6-4 at my website. This is Maple worksheet for the solution of this problem. But what's the general procedure? It was described here, but I'm going to repeat this. Hygroscopic loading is uh, zero. Therefore, the laminate equation is reduced to this form. Laminate stiffness matrix times mid-plane strain curvature vector equals this thermal loading vector composed of NT and MT. Which means that you need to form all these matrices, A, B, D, and T and MT. So this equation. And then you'll get total strain. Total strain is epsilon zero plus Z times kappa. These are the, this will give you the total strain components. Calculate mechanical strain in ply number two because we ask the stresses in ply number two, that's the 90 degree ply. Mechanical strain 
is total strain minus epsilon thermal minus epsilon C. And finally, evaluate stress in Y number two, sigma K equals Q bar K times epsilon mechanical K. That's going to give you stresses as functions of the coordinate Z. And if you substitute five millimeters for Z, you'll be able to compute stresses at this particular location. And I'm going to also show the maple worksheet. That's the maple worksheet for the solution. We are computing residual stresses in the 0, 090 laminates. That's uh, parametrically programmed. Number of plies is entered by the user. It's two in this case. Stiffness map C's are defined. And T is thermal force vector and MT is thermal moment vector. They are defined here. And dimensions of laminate stiffness matrix and load matrix, overall load matrix are specified at this stage. Uh, this vector H, is the ply border coordinate vector. We have defined it in previous examples as well. The ply border coordinates are minus five millimeters. That's converted to meters here, zero and five millimeters. There are two plies and ply angles are defined in this theta vector, zero and pi over two. Delta T is minus 75 degrees Celsius. Q bar array stores the Q bar map C's for different plies. There are only two plies now, therefore this has a total of 18 elements. And alpha array is needed. It's going to store alpha vector for the plies, alpha X, alpha Y, alpha X, Y values for ply one and ply two. In this case, it has six elements. Each ply is a graphite epoxy ply and material properties are from table 2.1. And it's, these properties also include thermal expansion coefficients in one and two directions, in longitudinal and transverse directions. Calculate the elements of the compliance matrix and reduce stiffness matrix for the octotropic lamina. And then evaluate the elements of Q bar matrix transformed stiffness matrix for each ply. Therefore, we have a loop from one to n or one to two elements of Q bar for each ply is calculated. And the hydrothermal problem, you also need to calculate the elements of the alpha vector for each ply. This is alpha x. The second one is alpha y, and the third one is alpha xy. Thermal expansion coefficients are also calculated and stored in this array, alpha array. A, B, and D matrices are formed. We have talked about these. This is A matrix, extensional stiffness matrix coupling stiffness matrix and this is the bending stiffness matrix. Each is computed. From the laminate stiffness matrix and the laminate loading vector, but the loading vector now contains the thermal force work vector and thermal moment vector. This summation is for the elements of thermal force vector and T. We have given the expressions, and this summation is for the elements of thermal moment vector MT. The unit is here inverted to Pascal, and in the end, we have computed MT and MT vectors. From the overall loading vector, that is, composed of NT and MT. And now you can solve the laminate equation 
by the linear solve command in Maple. Uh, it returns mid-plane strains and curvatures. This is, these are the mid-plane strains. These are the mid-plane curvatures, which are in one over meter. No shear terms because we are dealing with a cross ply laminate, which is uh, which consists of a zero degree ply and a 90 degree ply. And we can now calculate the total strain uh, or total strains epsilon x, epsilon y, and gamma xy. Uh, mechanical strains. These are mechanical strains in the 90 degree lamina in ply number two. Epsilon mechanical is epsilon total minus alpha times delta t. Now the alpha vector should contain the elements for the 90 degree lamina, the second ply. And therefore mechanical strains are calculated for ply number two. Now we will be able to calculate stresses in this ply, in the 90 degree ply. Sigma equals Q bar times epsilon. Global stresses are calculated. These are functions of Z because total strains are functions of Z. And global stresses are calculated. What are the numerical values of the global stresses? At, um, in the bottom surface of the 90 degree ply, where Z equals five over 1000 meters. Substitute these numerical values and sigma X is 7.5 megapascals. Sigma Y is 47.2. And it returns the shear stress as zero. And this is due to the fact that we are applying uh, or considering a cross ply laminates on the thermal loading. And that leads to zero shear strains and stresses. For these stresses are calculated. There are no mechanical effects here, no external mechanical loads. This is purely due to the drop in temperature. And that is our discussion for this lecture. And I'm going to stop recording.